This is a killer fly pattern that you won't want to be without. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using chartreuse. Insert the wire into your bead, securing it tightly in place and wrapping back towards the bend of your hook. With this complete, we'll reverse our thread's direction and start to build up a transition as we work towards the head of the fly. Doing so by wrapping forward, reversing your thread's direction back almost to the starting point before reversing your direction once again back up towards the head, repeating this process until you're happy with the results. Once happy, we'll whip finish. Set our thread aside and grab your brassy wire and begin to wrap this forward in closed touching spirals. If you have a rotary vise, this makes this process much easier. However, it's not necessary. Continue to wrap your wire forward, working up towards the bead and saving a bit of room for our following steps. Once complete, we'll secure our wire in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire before helicoptering the excess free. Next, we'll grab some natural colored hairs here. Here I'm using a new blend of Euro dubbing that you can find in the comments below. Strip a few fibers free and create a dubbing noodle. We'll be on to create a small build up of dubbing just on top of our thread wraps, leaving some room at the head of the fly for a few additional steps. With this complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice, bucky look. Next, we'll grab a CDC feather here I'm using a light done color. Measure it to be about as long as your wire before securing it tightly in place on the underside of our fly. Secure it tightly by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the material to pinch it in place before snipping the excess free. Cover up your tag ends and grab some saddle hackle. Here I'm using grizzly. We'll secure a few tips of our grizzly hackle to either side of our fly pattern However, I should mention that this pattern is originally tied with mallard flanks, which will help sink it a little faster. However, this fly sinks plenty fast, and I prefer the look like this. Snip your excess free, cover up your tag ends, and grab some more dubbing. This time, we're using black mixed in with a bit of ice dubbing. Blend them together, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping this just in front of our other materials until you reach your bead. Pull everything backwards, adding a few thread wraps in front before brushing it out to give it a nice, buggy look. Add some UV resin, whip finish to hold it all together. Snip your thread free and secure it in place with a UV light. And this is the Sweet Meat Caddis, a pattern that makes an exceptionally good diving or emerging caddis. And while it has a lot going on, it still sinks incredibly quickly, and I would highly suggest giving it a try. This simple midge can help you catch more fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to the hook shank, and snap the excess free. Next, we'll grab some red crystal flash, measure it to be about the length of the hook shank, and secure it to the back of our fly. With the tail secured, we'll begin wrapping up towards the bead, snip the excess free, and grab some wire. Here I'm using small in the color rust. Insert the wire into the bead, secure tightly, and wrap towards the back of the fly. Once we reach the tail, we'll reverse directions. Once we reach the tail, we'll reverse direction, wrapping our thread towards the bead. Once complete, grab your wire and begin wrapping it in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Take your time to ensure that each wrap is evenly spaced. Once you reach your bead, secure, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, then helicopter the excess free. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. This is one of my new favorites. You can find it in the links below. Create a dubbing noodle and wrap it just behind the bead. And brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is an inferno midge. Makes for a great attractor pattern. It sinks quickly and can be used year round. If you don't tie and would like to try it, you can pick some up on my website below. This fly can help you catch more fish. To start, we'll grab some olive thread and secure it to our hook shank, keeping the scraps for a later step. Continue wrapping just before the bend of the hook and reverse your thread to the hook point. 
We'll then grab some micro fibbits. However, here I'm using some synthetic deer hair. It makes for a versatile replacement that can be used in multiple situations. Select out three fibers and measure them to be about the length of your hook shank. Secure them carefully to the back of your fly, ensuring that you don't wrap too far into the bend of your hook. Once complete, snip your excess free and secure them tightly to the hook shank, ensuring that they don't move around. With this complete, we'll grab our strand of thread we just set to the side, string it through our hook, and use your fingers to help separate the microfibbits. Carefully sliding your thread up the hook shank in between them to help create separation. Secure your thread in place and snip the excess free. Secure tightly, but make sure you don't wrap back on the microfibbits. This step helps ensure that they splay out nicely like a mayfly's tail. Next, we'll grab some olive dubbing. Here I'm using a PMD color, create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this up the fly, creating a smooth transition towards the hook eye. Be sure to add or tighten your dubbing as needed. Once complete, we'll lay down a thread base towards our hook eye, returning and wrapping back on top of the dubbing slightly. Next, we'll grab a CDC feather, here I'm using a sulfur color, and measure it to be about the length of our body. Secure using your thread, wrapping back towards the dubbing. There's a few ways you can tie this fly. You can do as I'm doing here, wrapping forward on our CDC, folding it back, and securing it just as we've done before. This will help utilize your extra CDC and add a bit more flotation to your fly. So if you'd like to use this as a dry fly, I would highly suggest adding this extra step. However, I typically use this as an emerger behind a second dry fly and don't mind if it sinks. So I'll simply snip this excess free, which makes for a cleaner looking fly pattern our next step is to grab some more dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping it forward to continue our transition towards the head of the fly, having it slope down once we reach the hook eye. With this complete we'll whip finish to hold everything together, snip the excess free, and secure in place with some UV resin. And this is the RS2. It's a highly versatile fly that I've caught fish using it as a nymph in a merger and even a dry fly. And I would highly suggest giving it a shot this spring. And if you'd like to win this one, be sure to comment below, hashtag flies, and I will see you in the next one. If you're looking for a dropper fly to use in the fall, look no further. To tie it, we'll start off with some olive thread, secure it to our hook shank, wrapping towards the bend of our hook. At which point, we'll grab some blue wing olive dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping this forward in close touching spirals, building up a slight body transition towards the head of the fly. Continue to add or tighten the dubbing as needed. With this complete, we'll add a small strip of mylar to the top of our fly, securing it tightly just behind the head, followed by some more dubbing. This time, we're using black. Create another dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this forward once again in close, touching spirals towards the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. And grab a partridge feather. Snip the partridge feather into a triangle, like we see here, and attach it just behind the head of the fly. We'll secure it loosely at first, so we can position it in place by sliding it forward, folding over our mylar, and once again taking a few loose securing wraps. Finish positioning the partridge feather so that the legs of our fly extend just short of our body, like so. Once happy, secure everything tightly in place and snip the excess free. Followed by some whip finishes to hold it all together. Snip your thread free and add a drop of UV resin to head of the fly to add some durability as well as some shine to our pattern. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a blue wing olive that I like to tie in extremely small sizes behind a dry fly. It can work exceptionally well in the fall and also the spring months. If you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. And as always, we're going to be tying up one of the best variations of the band squirmy worm. We'll start with some hot pink thread, snip the excess free, securing the bead in place using some lead free wire. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping to the bend of the hook. 
at which point we'll take a few reps forward and grab some stretchy material. Here I'm using a rubber D-rib, however, I would suggest using a stretchy dental band that I've linked in the comments. Create a loop with your material and secure it to the back of the fly. Make sure your loop secured tightly by taking securing wraps both in front as well as behind your loop and continue towards the head of the fly. Snip one of your excess bands free, once again continuing towards the head of the fly. We'll fold our rubber material backwards, take a few securing wraps towards the head of the fly, and once again create a loop in our rubber band, using your thread to secure it lightly in place at first. This way, by pulling on the opposite end, we can shrink the loop to the size we're looking for. Once happy, secure in place with your thread and continue wrapping towards the bend of the hook. Snip your excess free and use your thread to smooth out the body. Finishing at the head of the fly. Hold everything in place by whip finishing, snip your thread free, and paint over everything with some UV resin to add shine and durability to our pattern. Fix in place with the UV light and grab some spare wire. Use the wire to string it through the two loops that we just created and open up the loops at the end using a pair of tweezers. Next, we'll grab some squirmy wear material, here I'm using pink, insert it through our loop, and begin pulling the wire to help draw the squirmy wear material through the two loops. They should be quite tight to hold it in place. Once complete, remove the wire, snip the squirmy wear material to length, and this is an improved squirmy worm, suggested by Tim from the Trout and Feather. I've linked his full video in the comments below. It's an excellent pattern that promotes a lot of movement in the water and also can be replaced if the fish chew it up. I would highly suggest giving it a try. And as always, if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying up a buggy or hare's ear. We'll start off with some tan thread, secure it to our hook shank and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping till you reach the bend of your hook then grab a rabbit mask, snip a pinch of fibers free, measure them to length, and secure them to the back of your fly. Securing the tag ends tightly to help build up the body and bring your thread forward. We'll then grab some gold wire, inserting it into our bead and wrapping back towards the tail, at which point we'll bring our thread forward and grab some ostrich hurl. Here I'm using white. Secure the ostrich hurl to your hook shake, once again, wrapping back towards your tail. At which point, we'll grab some hair's ear, create a dubbing noodle, and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, building up a transition and stopping just short of our bead. At which point, we'll grab our ostrich hurl and begin wrapping it forward in open spirals, being careful not to pull too hard and break the ostrich off. Doing so, until we reach our thread. Secure it tightly. Snip your excess free, grabbing your gold wire and counter wrapping the ostrich hurl to add some durability and flash to our pattern. Secure the wire in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. And of course, brush everything out to give it a nice buggy look. We'll then grab some flashaboo, secure it to the head of our fly, wrapping back towards our body, followed by a turkey flat. Snip a small clump free, about 8 to 10 fibers, securing it to the head of your fly, once again wrapping back towards our body, before creating another dubbing noodle, this time a bit looser than the first, and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals continuing to add to our transition until we reach the head of the fly, adding a single thread wrap in front of it to help brush it back, and of course, brush everything out to give it a nice, buggy look. Next, we'll fold over our turkey tail, secure it tightly to the head of our fly, followed by our flashaboo, securing both in front, as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything tightly in place. Snip your thread free and paint over the back with some UV resin, adding some durability and shine to our pattern. And this is how I personally like to tie hair's ears. Of course it's a bit buckier, but specifically I tie these to represent the profile of mayflies. And they work especially well in the spring and summer months. 
and I'd highly recommend giving it a try, both in natural, olive, as well as brown. We're going to be tying a giant helgramite that you should have in your fly box this spring. To start, We'll attach some tan thread to our hook shank and create a small buildup around the eye of the fly. Grab some brown biots, select two fibers and place them in a V formation, securing them to the head of the fly. Secure tightly to your hook shank and snip the excess free. Cover your tag ends and whip finish to hold it in place. Snip your thread free and slide the bead back to the head of the fly, at which point We'll reattach our thread, snipping the excess free. And grab some lead-free wire. Insert the wire into the bead and secure tightly with your thread. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping the thread well into the bend of the hook. Here, we'll create another thread dam just as we did at the head of the fly that'll help splay out our biots. Place two more biots at the back of the fly and secure them with your thread. We'll then grab some straggle string, which is essentially sparsest as, secure it to our hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll set it aside and grab some tan dubbing. Here I'm using a synthetic blend. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this in closed touching spirals, tightening and adding more dubbing as needed. We'll continue doing so until we reach just past our hook point. With this complete, we'll grab our straggle string and begin to counter wrap the dubbing until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab our dubbing brush and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Wrap your thread to the bead and grab some mylar. Here I'm using pearl. Secure the mylar strip to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards your dubbing. Returning the thread forward, we'll then grab a turkey tail. I get asked where I get my materials all the time, and like this turkey tail, many of them are gathered from hunting trips. Many of you don't know this, but I actually have a second channel that has hundreds of hours of both fishing and hunting related content. You can check that out in the comments below. With this complete, we'll grab this cool set of legs and secure them to the top of the fly. Don't worry too much about how the leg placement looks because we'll be fixing that in the next step. Just focus on securing it tightly. Grab some more dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and use the dubbing, both dubbing the body and also taking care to position the legs how you'd like. Take your time with this and create a transition towards the head of the fly. Once complete, fold over your turkey tail, secure in place, followed by your mylar. Secure them both tightly, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Whip finishing to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and grab some thin UV resin, painting it over the back of your fly. Secure with a UV light and brush everything out to give it a nice, buggy look. And this is a Helgramite imitation. I find they work exceptionally well in the spring, and if these are in your waters, you should definitely give it a try. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're going to be tying a fly pattern fired by the surfboard minnow to imitate floating smelt. To start, we'll grab some white thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. At which point, we'll continue wrapping backwards towards the bend of our hook before grabbing some pink deer hair. Measure a small clump to be about the length of your hook shank and secure it to the back of the fly. Doing so by taking a single wrap behind it to help lock it to the top side of our hook shank before securing it tightly in place. Snip the excess free and cover up your tag ends. And as a note going forward, this pattern should be tied with the hook point facing down. However, we'll be doing it this way so the vise won't block your view. With this complete, we'll grab some crystal flash. Here I'm using UV pink, securing it to one side of our fly before folding it over and securing it to the other. Securing it tightly and trimming it to length, keeping it slightly longer than our deer hair. At which point we'll grab a natural bucktail, selecting some darker fibers on the back side. Measure it to length and secure it in place, once again taking a thread wrap around it before locking it in to the top side of our fly. Secure tightly and snip the excess free. Once again securing your tag ends before wrapping backwards towards the tail. At which point we'll grab some peacock curl, securing about four to five strands over the top of our bucktail. 
secure tightly, snip your excess free, and cover up the tag ends. Next, we'll flip our bucktail over and grab some of the white fibers, securing it to the bottom side of our fly using the previous methods. Secure it tightly in place, and if you'd like to win this fly, well, not necessarily this fly, but one tied properly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. And snip the excess free. Cover up your tag ends. and grab some Flashaboo. Here I'm using silver. Secure about four strands to one side of your fly before once again folding it over and securing it to the other. Trim it to length and grab some lateral scale. Here I'm using pearl. Secure your lateral scale to the hook shank before folding it over and wrapping back on top of it. Next, we'll grab some white foam, trim out a small fin-like section, and secure it just in front of our tail, starting with a few looser thread wraps before tightening it down, using a thread that's thick enough so we don't cut through the foam. With this complete, we'll fold it over, taking a few wraps in front of it to help keep it out of our way before bringing our thread forward up towards the hook eye. Here, We'll secure our thread in place, set it aside, and if you have a rotary vise, you can use this to help spin your flashaboo forward in close touching spirals, helping to add some shine to our fly pattern. And if you don't tie, and would like to stock up your fly box for the spring season, you can visit my website at mainly-outdoors.com. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure the flashaboo in place taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab our extra flashaboo that we left on the back side of the fly and begin wrapping it forward once again in closed touching spirals. This will help give it that pink or violet shine that smelt have on their midline. Continue wrapping your lateral scale forward once again until we reach our thread before securing it tightly in place. Snip the excess free and paint it over with some UV resin, helping to enhance the shine and creating a durable body. Once happy, fix in place with a UV light, grabbing some more pink deer hair. We'll secure this along the side of our fly. Snip our tag ends free and add some more pink crystal flash on top. Snip the excess free and follow it up with some more natural deer hair. Secure in place. Snip it free and cover your tag ends. We'll then secure some more peacock over the top of this, measuring it to extend all the way to our tail. Snip it free, adding some white deer hair to the underside of our fly pattern. Secure. Snip the excess free and cover up your tag ends. We'll then add some more flashaboo. Snip it free, folding over our excess lateral scale and securing it to the head of the fly. Snip it free before folding your foam over, trimming off the excess, 
and snipping a small notch where it meets the thread. At which point, we'll secure it tightly in place, starting with some loose thread wraps as to not cut through our foam. Once complete, we'll fold it over, taking some thread wraps in front of it to help prop it up. Before whip finishing, to secure it in place. Snip your thread free and trim your foam to length. Once complete, we'll grab a living eye, here I'm using the color ice, fixing in place with some super glue before further securing it with some UV resin. I like to use eyes that are a bit oversized to draw some attention. Fix in place with the UV light, and this is a surfboard floating smelt, made to imitate smelt that die on their way to the spawning grounds in the spring. It's a fun pattern to tie, and a great way to get some top water rises before the insects start hatching. And while this is a smelt variation that I like to use on my home waters, it can of course be tied in any minnow pattern. Just be sure to have your hook facing on the underside. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying up one of my favorite attractor variants of this extremely successful competition fly. We'll start off with some black thread, inserting some web-free wire into our bead, secure it in place tightly, and helicopter your excess free. At which point, we'll continue wrapping backwards towards the bend of our hook and grab some black feathers. We'll secure a small clump to the back of our fly, making up the tail wrapping backwards towards the bend of our hook before reversing our direction, securing the tag ends up towards the bead. This will help build up an even transition of her body. Snip the excess free and grab some tinsel. Here I'm using medium in the color purple. Snip a small piece free, securing it to the head of the fly before wrapping backwards until we reach our tail. And if you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. And if you want to help support the channel, you can pick up some fly boxes if you don't tie, or submit a custom order form, and I'll tie up whatever flies you're looking for. We'll continue building up a transition towards the head of the fly by wrapping forward, reversing our direction almost back to the starting point, and wrapping your thread back up to the head continuing to do so until we're happy with our transition. You can build this up into a strong carrot shape. However, I think these flies work particularly well when left slender. We'll finish up by wrapping up towards the head of the fly, grabbing our tinsel and wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals and continue to do so until you reach your thread. At which point, we'll secure it in place taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Cover up your tag ends and build up a slight base of our black thread. While I like to keep mine black, this is typically used to build up a hot spot and you can swap this out for whatever color you'd like. With this complete, snip our thread free and paint it over with some UV resin. Here I'm using solar res in bone dry. Paint over the entirety of the body before fixing it in place with a UV light. At which point, we'll add a small drop to the back of the fly, filling in our bead, secure it in place with the UV light, and while it doesn't show through with my bead choice and black collar, if you use different colors, you can create a darker look to clear UV finish by taking a black sharpie, coloring it over before letting it dry, and adding another drop of UV resin. Smooth it out before fixing it in place. And this is a purple paragon, a favorite of mine to use in dark and dirty waters, or just use as an attractor and I'd highly suggest giving it a try. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can find it in all competition anglers fly boxes. And as always, this tiny fly ended up landing me my biggest fish last spring. To tie it, we'll start off with some olive thread, secure it to our hook shank, grab some extra small wire, here I'm using black, secure it to your hook shank, and continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction a little bit past the barb. Here, we'll create a small buildup of thread that'll be the widest point in our fly. Once complete, we'll advance our thread forward, adding a couple layers of thread to our midsection, 
and leaving some room at the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll once again create a small buildup of thread just behind the hook eye. This one will be slightly smaller than the tail. Next, grab your black wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals, continuing to do so until you reach your thread. At which point we'll secure with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. Whip finish to hold it all together. Snip your thread free and paint over the body with some UV resin. This will help create some shine as well as make this pattern incredibly durable. And this is the black fly larva, a spring pattern that I never like to leave out of my fly box. You have to try this productive springtime trout streamer. To start, we'll grab some black thread here I'm using 6 aught cure it to our hook shank, and lay down a thread base for our next steps. We'll then grab some wire and a stinger hook. Here I'm using a size 8, which I find perfect for most trout. Measure it to length, keeping it about the size of our hook shank, and using our thread to secure it tightly. Wrap up towards the hook eye, folding your wire over, and securing it back towards the hook. This will help ensure that it stays in place. Snip your wire free using the back end of your scissors and carefully secure the tag ends to the hook shank. Once complete, we'll whip finish and snip our thread free, swapping it out for a smaller yet durable 70 denier UTC. Secure it to your hook shank, snip the excess free and continue wrapping down the hook shank a bit further than we left off. Once complete, bring your thread forward and create a dubbing loop. Next, we'll grab some fluorescent pink ice dubbing, straightening out the fibers by using your fingers to separate them, pinch them back together, and continuing this process until they lay flat. At which point, we'll insert them into our dubbing loop, space it out with your fingers, and use your fingers or a weighted tool to help spin it up. And brush it out to give it a nice, bucky look. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping it around our hook shank, brushing back any fibers to ensure that we don't trap it underneath. Continue this process about halfway up the hook shank. Once complete, use your thread to secure the dubbing loop in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Grab your dubbing brush, brush out any trapped fibers, and of course, give it a nice bucky look. With this complete, wrap back on your dubbing slightly to help brush it back. Also, one simple trick with these intruders is to take a piece of foam and stick it over the hook eye so your materials or fingers don't get stuck in it. We'll then create another dubbing loop just in front of our pink dubbing ball, grabbing some white ice dubbing, UV white larval lace, and a little more pink ice dubbing. Create another dubbing blend and slide this up our dubbing loop, spinning it up and brushing it free just as we did before. With this complete, we'll carefully begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, brushing back any fibers to ensure we don't trap them. We'll continue about three thirds of the way up the hook. And if you have a little too much dubbing, you can secure it early and snip the excess free. Brushing everything back and taking a few thread wraps on top of it to give it a nice brush bath look. Brush any trapped fibers free. Next, we'll grab some lateral scales. Here I'm using a pearl. Secure it to one side. Folding the excess over and securing it to the opposite. We'll trim these to length to reach a little bit past our hook. Next, we'll grab some white marabou, brush the fibers backwards, and snip the tip free, leaving us with a small tie-in point. Secure to your hook shank, and begin to palmer it up the body. Once again, being sure to brush all the fibers backwards to give it a better look. Typically, I like to do about two to three turns, depending on the look you're going for. Once happy, use your thread to secure the marabou in place, and snip the excess free. Brushing all your fibers backwards and wrapping on top of it to help give it that brush back look. We'll then grab a grizzly saddle hackle 
Grab two fibers and secure them to the upper portion of our fly. I find it's usually easiest to start with one and then tie in the second. Secure them tightly and snip the excess free. We'll then grab a mallard flank. For this pattern, I prefer to use the slightly darker ones that have a little bit of brown in them. However, it's hard to find them sold like this, so either go into a fly shop and find what you're looking for, but if not, you can always swipe it out for a white alternative. Secure it to the head of the fly, and begin to wrap this forward, once again, about two to three turns. Brushing the fibers back as you go, and laying the stem just in front of the previous wrap. Once happy, use your thread to secure, and snip the excess free. Carefully cover up your tag end and build up a small head section, wrapping back on the mallard flank slightly. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Seat your knot and snip your thread free and brush it out to help separate your mallard flank and give it that nice buggy look. Clean up the head and add durability by panning it over with some UV resin. Fix in place with a UV light, and this is a micro intruder pattern that I created to imitate our local springtime smelt. It's a great pattern that I had a lot of success on last year. I'd give this one away, but I'm trying to fill up my fly box before the season starts. Now remember, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can pick up some flies on my website or submit a custom order form. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This extremely buggy pattern still sinks incredibly quickly. We'll start off with two different colored tungsten and bead of your choice. Here I've selected to use a tan and a smaller gold head. Secure your thread to your hook shank, inserting a lead free wire to help secure our beads in place. Secure tightly and helicopter the excess free. At which point we'll start wrapping our thread back towards the start of the bend of our hook. And if you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Here, we'll grab some mallard flank feathers, strip about 8 to 10 fibers free, securing them to the back of our fly to create the tail of our pattern. Snip the excess free, cover up your tag ends, and grab some flashaboo. Here I'm using pearl. Insert the flashaboo into the bead, securing it in place, wrapping back towards your tail. At which point, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a natural hair's ear. Strip a bit free and create a dubbing noodle. We'll begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals, making a slight transition as we move towards our beads. Continue wrapping forward, stopping just short of the start of the bead, leaving some additional room for our following steps. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. We'll then grab our flashaboo and begin wrapping it forward in open spirals, helping to add some shine to our pattern. Continue wrapping forward until you reach your thread, at which point we'll secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Brush everything out once more before creating a small buildup of hair's ear that'll help with our next step. We'll grab two sets of mallard flanks, securing them in place using a pinch wrap to the top side of our fly. The previous hair's ear will help prop this up so it doesn't lay too flat. Snip the excess free. Secure your tag in, folding over your thread and wrapping back on top of it to create a dubbing loop. Next, we'll then grab some tan UV ice dubbing and blend this with some natural colored hair's ear. This will help add a bit of shine to the head of our fly. Mix them together, insert it into your dubbing loop, and spin it up, brushing it out to free up any trapped fibers. We'll then begin wrapping this forward up towards our bead, using our fingers to brush back the fibers in the process. Once happy, we'll secure it in place with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. And of course, brush everything out to give it that nice, buggy look. Add some glue to your thread, whip finish, and snip your thread free. And this is a depth charge bird nest, an extremely buggy fly pattern that when coupled with two beads, still sinks incredibly quickly. 
Depending on the size, it can imitate a variety of insects, and I would highly suggest giving it a try. This tiny fly is a fish magnet. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread and grab some small wire. Here I'm using rust. Insert the wire into the bead and secure it tightly with your thread. Continue securing the wire to the hook shank well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly. Once again reversing our thread's direction to begin to build up a body transition. You can make this as thick or as thin as you'd like. Once happy, we'll grab our wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals taking care to make each wrap evenly spaced. Doing so until you reach the head of the fly, at which point we'll secure with our thread, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab a CDC feather, here I'm using white, and secure it to the head of the fly. Adjust your feather's length to be about the size of your hook and then secure it tightly in place. Snip the excess free and continue securing, laying down a thread base for our next step. We'll then grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a synthetic blend, incorporating some red fibers. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this around the head of your fly. Pull everything backwards and whip finish to hold it all in place. Snip your thread free and brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. And this is a variation of a CDC midge that I like to call the Inferno Emerger. The CDC will trap air bubbles, just as a wing case would, and the red color will help attract attention. Today, we're going to be tying an underutilized fly pattern that deserves a spot in your fly box. To start, grab some small copper wire, secure it to the hook shank, wrapping well into the bend of the hook at which point we'll reverse our thread's direction back to the head of the fly. If you have a rotary vise, put in a couple turn whip finish and set your thread to the side. We'll then grab our wire and use your vise's rotary function to wrap it towards the head of the fly. If your vise doesn't have a rotary function, you can simply do this by hand. Today is also the airing of the first ever Mainly Flies podcast. You can find that on my second channel, linked here. The primary focus will be to answer your fly tying questions. So if there's anything you want to know more detail about, be sure to leave it in the comments of the most recent podcast. Once we reach the hook point, we'll grab our thread and secure the wire tightly in place, taking thread wrap both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some tinsel. Here I'm using a gold hollow tinsel. Secure it to one side of our fly, wrapping back towards the wire. Repeating this process with the other side. Secure tightly and begin to build up a larger head than our body. Fold your tinsel over and secure it to the head of the fly. Take your time to ensure they're oriented how you like. With this complete, snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything in place and cover your tag ends. Snip your thread free and grab some bone dry UV resin to paint over the body as well as the head. Fix in place with the UV light and add a second drop to the head of the fly. We want to make this look a little bit larger than the body. Fix with the UV light and this is the brass It's a highly productive fly pattern that often gets overlooked and they work exceptionally well in the spring and winter months. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, I'm going to be sharing a secret that fly tires don't want you to know. But to start, we'll grab some orange thread and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping your thread to the back of the hook and create a thread dam that'll be important for our next step. Once complete, grab some brown biots, strip off two and place them in a V formation. We'll measure them to be about the length of the hook shank and secure them to the back of the fly. The thread buildup will help display them out. Secure the biots tightly and begin wrapping towards the bead. Once complete, snip the excess furry and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Insert the wire into the bead, secure it tightly and wrap back towards the tail. Next, we'll grab one of my favorite dubbing blends, you can find it in the links below, create a dubbing noodle, 
and begin wrapping it around our hook shank, building up a taper as we work towards the head of the fly. Take your time with this and tighten the dubbing noodle as needed. Now remember, start with a little bit because you can always add more. Next, we'll grab our wire and begin wrapping in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Secure tightly, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. And then we'll brush out the body to give this fly a nice buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free and add a very loose dubbing noodle, wrapping this just around the head of the fly. Pull everything back and add a couple thread wraps in front. With this complete, brush it out once again to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a fly called Scruffy. And while it may not look pretty, I prefer fishing these buggy flies. So remember, if you're new to fly tying, don't get discouraged by seeing someone's pretty fly because a fly like this is likely to catch more fish anyway. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today we're going to be tying a controversial fly. To start this pattern, grab some ultra thread in red and attach it to our hook shank. Snip the excess free and insert a lead free wire. Secure tightly and helicopter the excess free. We'll then wrap back well into the bend of our hook and grab some pink crystal flash. We'll select about four strands, secure it tightly to the back of our fly and snip the excess free. Further secure it to the hook shank and wrap back up towards the head of our fly. We will then select a white and pink microfiber cotton, secure this to the head of our fly, wrapping back towards our crystal flash. Once complete, we'll make sure that there's no exposed fibers showing, building up a nice red base. We can then fold over our cotton, use our fingers to create a small loop, and secure that tightly to the hook shank, using our thread to secure it in place. Wrap back on it slightly, and then we'll continue up the fly, repeating this process. Create a loop with your fingers slightly larger than the last, secure, and continue to the next loop. We will make this one roughly about the same size, secure it tightly, creating one last loop that is slightly smaller than the previous, securing it tightly and snipping the excess free. We can then whip finish, securing everything in place, snip our thread free and add some head cement or UV resin to add some durability and shine to this pattern. And finally, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Love them or hate them, egg patterns are extremely productive and I would love to hear your opinions and thoughts on this in the comments below. If you want to win this fly, you can add hashtag flies for your chance to win. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. This is a fly that's very popular in my home waters, but relatively unknown everywhere else. We'll start this pattern by grabbing some red UTC and securing it to our hook shank. Snip the excess free and continue wrapping your thread to the bend of the hook. We will then grab some ginger marabou, securing it tightly to the back of the fly. In order to build up the body, we'll fold over the marabou wrap our thread forward, and then fold the marabou back towards the bead, securing it in place. Further secure the marabou to your hook shank, and this is a quick way to build up a body. Snip the excess free, and grab some gold estaz. Pulling off the tips, exposing the braided line, and secure it to the back of the fly. Once complete, we will start to wrap our thread forward, taking time to completely cover any exposed feathers. This is a key step in producing this pattern. Once complete, we will grab our gold estaz and begin wrapping it forward in open spirals, using your fingers to pull the estaz backwards each wrap to ensure you don't trap any underneath. Once at the bead, we will secure the estaz in place, taking wraps both in front and behind, snipping the excess free. We can then grab a whip finisher and build up a prominent band at the head of our fly. This is a hot spot that's very characteristic of this pattern. And this is the golden retriever, 
Originally invented for panfish, it is also extremely successful for trout and salmon. If you'd like to try this fly, but don't tell yourself, you can visit my website listed below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of my most used stonefly nymphs, and today I'm going to show you how to tie it. We'll start off with some black thread and snip the excess free. Insert some lead free wire into the bead, secure it, and helicopter the excess free. We'll then continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook and build up a thread dam for our next step. With this complete, we'll grab some biots. Here I like to use brown to add a bit of contrast. Place them in a V formation, securing them to the back of the fly. Wrap back slightly onto your thread dam that'll help splay the tails apart. Continue to secure the biot stems to the hook shank and begin building up a body transition slightly past the hook point. This will build up bulk and give the tail section a better look. With this complete, we'll grab some medium black vinyl, secure it to the hook shank and wrap back towards the tail. Return your thread forward and begin wrapping the vinyl forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. Once complete, secure, taking several thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and snipping the excess free. Secure your tag end in place and whip finish, cutting your thread free. We'll swap out to a smaller thread for these next steps. Secure it to the head of the fly, snap the excess free, and grab a small piece of thin skin. Secure it to the top of your fly and wrap back towards your vinyl. Next, grab the dubbing of your choice. Here I'm using a copper ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle. Begin by wrapping just in front of your vinyl and finishing with your thread slightly in front. Grab a single biot and secure it to the side of your fly. The dubbing ball will help push it out, measuring this one to length to be about the size of our vinyl body. Do the same to the other side and snip the excess free. We'll create another dubbing noodle, again using our copper dubbing, and wrap this just in front of our biots. Once complete, we'll fold over our thin skin, secure it tightly in place, folding it back over on itself and securing once again. With this complete, we'll repeat the previous steps two more times, bringing us to the head of the fly for a total of six legs. With this complete, you can snip your thin skin free and whip finish to hold it all in place. Next, we'll add a generous amount of UV resin, starting just slightly onto our vinyl ribbing over the top of the thin skin, and then slightly onto the head of the fly. Fix in place with the UV light, and brush the legs free to give it a nice, buggy look. If you want to take an extra step, you can fold the legs over, pressing them with a pair of pliers in order to give them an extra buggy look. And this is the vinyl stonefly. Its sleek, streamlined nature helps it sink quickly in the water, but it also has an excellent profile. You can find it on my website listed below. And if you'd like to win this one, or I'll throw in six. If you'd like to win six of these, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.
This is one of the world's most used and popular fly patterns. To tie it, we'll start off with some brown thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping until you reach the bend of the hook and grab some pheasant tail. We'll grab about five or six fibers, measure them to be roughly the length of the hook shank, and secure them to the back of the fly. Once complete, we'll continue wrapping towards the bead, further securing the pheasant tail as we go. Snip the excess free and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Insert the wire into your bead and secure wrapping back towards the tail. We'll bring our thread forward just past the hook point, grab some more pheasant tail and secure it to our hook shank, once again wrapping back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping our pheasant tail forward in closed touching spirals. You can do so by just wrapping it around with your fingers. However, if your vise has a rotary function, this makes the process far easier. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure the pheasant tail in place and snip the excess free. We'll then grab our brassy wire and begin to wrap it forward, counter wrapping our pheasant tail as we go. Doing so will help increase the durability of this pattern. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and helicopter the excess free. Grab a few more strands of pheasant tail and secure them with the tips facing out past the bead. Generally, I measure mine to be about one and a half bead lengths. Continue securing the pheasant tail on top of our hook, wrapping back towards the wire. Once complete, bring your thread forward and grab some peacock curl. We'll select a couple strands, secure them to the body and wrap back towards our pheasant tail. We'll return our thread to the bead and begin wrapping our peacock curl in closed spirals towards the head of the fly. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping our excess furry. We'll then take our fingers and use them to splay out our pheasant tail tips to form some legs. Once happy, we'll fold over the remaining pheasant tail fibers, secure them just behind the bead and snip the excess furry. Whip finish to hold everything in place. The pheasant tail is a classic pattern that is one of the most known and used patterns out there. It makes for a great general pattern imitating mayflies and caddis exceptionally well. You can find this pattern on my website, but if you would like your chance to win this fly, comment hashtag flies, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of the most popular flies out there, and this particular one has a secret. To tie it, we'll start off with some white thread Secure it to our hook shank, snapping the excess free. We'll continue wrapping backwards until we reach the bend of our hook and grab some white marabou. Measuring your marabou to be a bit longer than the hook shank, transfer your measurement and tightly secure it to the back of the fly. With this complete, we'll fold over the marabou, wrap to the bead, folding the marabou back over and securing it tightly in place. And if you want to win this fly, Comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Snip the excess free, adding a single wrap to the back of the marabou to help secure it in place. Next, we'll grab some flash. Here I'm using pearl. Securing several strands to one side of our fly before folding it over and securing them to the other. Continue wrapping backwards until you reach your tail, snipping them to be a bit longer than our marabou. We'll then grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using silver. Secure it to the side of your fly, once again wrapping back towards the tail, followed by some white estaz. Securing it tightly in place, once again wrapping back towards our tail, before wrapping your thread up to the bead. With this complete, we'll grab our estaz and begin to wrap it forward in closed touching spirals, continuing to do so until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure it in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. We'll then grab some hackle. Here I'm using a grizzly, pulling some excess fibers free and securing it to the head of your fly. Snipping the excess free and begin to wrap it backwards, adding a few extra wraps towards the head of the fly before continuing backwards in open spirals. We'll continue to do so until we reach our tail, at which point we'll grab our wire, counter wrapping the hackle to help secure it tightly in place, trying to prevent from trapping any hackle fibers in the process, and continue to do so until you reach your bead. At which point, we'll secure the wire in place, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicoptering the excess free. We'll brush everything backwards and use our thread to help give it a more brush back look, before snipping our excess hackle free 
and grabbing some white ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this just in front of your hackle. And of course brush it out to help remove any trapped fibers and give it a nice buggy look. With this complete, we'll whip finish to hold it all in place, snip our thread free, and this is a highly productive variation of the crystal woolly bugger. And this one even glows in the dark. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Are you tired of your friends making fun of you for fishing your egg patterns? Well then this fly is for you. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread and an oversized orange bead. We'll insert a lead free wire into our bead to help hold it in place. Secure tightly with your thread and helicopter the excess furry. We'll continue building up a thread dam just behind our bead and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using silver. Insert the wire into our bead and secure it tightly with your thread, continuing to wrap towards the bend of our hook. Stopping just before the start of the bend at which point we'll reverse our thread's direction, ensuring that we have tight thread wraps to smooth out our body and continue to do so until you reach the bead, at which point we'll grab our thread and begin to wrap it forward, starting with a close spiral at the beginning of the fly, after which opening it up to open spirals and continuing to do so until we reach our thread. At which point we'll secure the wire in place by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some peacock hurl, select a single strand and secure it to the head of our fly. Wrap your thread forward and begin hackling the peacock forward in close touching spirals until you reach your thread. With this complete, we'll secure the peacock hurl in place and snip the excess free. And this is a fast sinking egg pattern disguised as a zebra midge. I'd highly suggest adding a few to your fly box for that fast moving water or pocket water trout. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. This will likely land you your first fish on a dry fly this season. To tie it, we'll start off with some small black thread and securing it to our hook shank all the way to the bend of the hook. Once we reach the bend of the hook, we'll reverse our thread's direction back up towards the head of the fly, keeping your thread buildup as smooth and uniform as possible. Once we reach the head of the fly, we'll reverse our thread slightly and grab some grizzly saddle hackle. Select a single feather measured to the size of your hook, strip a few fibers free, and use this to secure it to your hook shank. Bring your thread back up to the hook eye and begin to hackle your feather forward until you reach your thread, typically about two to three turns. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. With this complete, we'll brush all our fibers upward using our thread to help hold it in place, beginning by wrapping back on it slightly and then looping around it as you would a parachute. Continue doing so until all the fibers stand upward. Next, we'll take our thread and carefully run it through the fibers to help spread them back out as well as increase the fly's durability. Finishing with your thread just in front of our tuft. Next, we'll grab a high-vis parapost, you're amusing fluorescent green, and secure this just behind our hook eye. And fold the material backwards using your thread to hold it in place. Once complete, we'll whip finish to hold everything together, snip our thread free, and cut your parapost to length. And this is the high-vis Noceum Midge. It offers an incredibly thin profile. It's one of my go-to patterns when I see any midges or small flies emerging. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. We're gonna be tying a spring nymph that deserves a spot in your fly box. To start, we'll grab some small wire. Here I'm using green, as well as some brassy wire in chartreuse. Select a single strand of chartreuse and two green wires. However, as for all of my patterns, you can use whatever colors you like to best match the bugs in your rivers. Secure them to the hook shank and begin wrapping well into the bend of the hook. Once complete, reverse your thread's direction and we'll begin to build up a smooth transition to form our body. Grab your wires and begin to wrap them forward in closed touching spirals, ensuring that the green remains in contact with the chartreuse, continuing to do so until we reach our thread.
Once complete, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind our wire, and helicoptering the excess free. Bring your thread to the head of the fly and grab some mylar. Here I'm using pearl. Secure the mylar to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards our wire. Once complete, use your thread to build up a body that's even with your wire, leaving a small amount of room at the head of the fly. And grab some pearl UV crystal flash, selecting four strands and securing them to the head of the fly. Fold your strands over and secure them back towards our wire. Once complete, snip the excess free. Next, we'll fold our mylar over, secure it to the head of the fly, and snip the excess free. With this complete whip finish to build up a small head, snip your thread free and paint over the back, head section, and our body with some UV resin. This will add shine and durability to our pattern. And this is the Juju Betis. This particular pattern works well to imitate blue wing olives. However, it can represent a variety of insects. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. This simple yet effective miniature fly pattern is all you need to mimic stone flies. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, snip our excess free, at which point we'll insert some lead free wire into our bead to help fix it in place and add some more weight. We'll wrap backwards, returning our thread back up towards the bead at which point we'll grab our wire and begin wrapping it forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread, at which point we'll secure, helicopter the excess free, and secure the wire in place with our thread, creating a small thread dam behind it to ensure it stays in place. And if you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below, at which point we'll start to wrap backwards well into the bend of our hook creating a small thread dam that'll help with our next step. We'll then grab some black biop, snip a few free, measure them to length, securing them just behind our thread dam. Continue wrapping backwards, forcing them up against the thread dam will help splay them apart. Once happy, we'll secure our tag ends in place to help build up our body. At which point, we'll grab some brassy wire, here I'm using silver, insert it into our bead, wrapping back towards our tail. With this complete, we'll set the wire aside and use our thread to build up a transition towards the head of the fly, doing so by wrapping up to the wire before reversing the thread's direction almost to the starting point and repeating this to build up as much or as little bulk as you'd like. Once we're happy with our transition, we'll grab our wire and start to wrap it forward in open spirals, adding some shine and a segmented look to our fly pattern. Continue wrapping forward until you reach your thread, secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire before helicoptering the excess free. At which point, we'll grab two more biots, place them in a V formation and secure them over the top of our fly. Secure tightly and snip the excess free. The goal is to have them splay out like our tails, and it should look something like this. At which point, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a black hair's ear. Pull some free, and create a dubbing noodle. We'll wrap the dubbing noodle forward until we reach the bead. At which point, we'll add some more hair's ear, this time creating a looser dubbing noodle to give it a buggier look, pulling the fibers backwards as we wrap around the bead. Once complete, we'll brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. Add some UV resin to your threads and whip finish to hold it all in place. Seat your knot, snip it free, and fix in place with a UV light. And this is a miniature stonefly that's incredibly easy to tie and is sure to catch you some fish. And if you don't tie and want to stock up your fly box for the spring season, you can visit my website at mainly-outdoors.com and pick up some of the in-stock flies or submit a custom order. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.